Hey everyone, Scott here, and today we're just going to look at this old dictionary. Oh, just for fun. This is going to be a bonus video. I was looking for dictionaries a while back, and this one caught my eye just because it's old. The cover's cool. I like that red and gray. And it's old enough that it was just kind of fun to look at and see how things have changed. This is the Grosset Webster Dictionary. And it's, uh, it says it's a new dictionary revised on Websterian principles, which is a lot of marketing speak. Uh, Webster is, Merriam-Webster is like the company that officially is tied back to Noah Webster. However, the name Webster has no copyright protection. It can be used by anyone, and it's used very generically in dictionaries. has been uh, more so in the past when a lot of different publishers were around making them, but it is still a generic term, and that's the case here. Grosset is Grosset and Dunlap, and their name was familiar to me because they published this little Prayers Ancient and Modern, which I'm going to show in a different video. There they are, Grosset, Grosset and Dunlap. I don't think they're around anymore, but let's have a look at this. 75,000 entries, 1,000 illustrations. And one of the things they really advertise is that it spells out pronunciations without symbols. So it provides pronunciation guides without the sort of symbols and that we're used to in modern dictionaries. And I'll show you that mm, maybe it doesn't always do a very good job. We're just going to look at a few things here for fun. Um, let's go ahead and look at one of those pronunciations. I think I have it bookmarked. Yes. Because they did not do a very good job. So, I can zoom in. There we go. So, effulgence. That's a word I struggled with in a video a while back. Uh, and it's one I thought to check in here. And... A flood of light, splendor, shining brightly. That's effulgence. Here's how they have you pronounce it. And I don't know about you, but I'd read this effulgens. Well, that's not correct. So I don't think their system mm, is very foolproof. Uh, probably there's some others a lot that do work. I don't know. Here's egad. To me, that says egad. I, yeah. I tried. I don't think that one worked. Um, effective. Effective. Okay, hey, this one was effective. It works. All right. Enough of that. Let's look at... They have a section here at the beginning. of. So what they've done is they got new words and then the dictionary. So I think they probably had the dictionary... They wanted to add new words, so it's up to date. Uh, this and this would be, we're talking late 50s, mid 60s. And rather than update the existing dictionary, which would be expensive and require typesetting and everything, they just added a section of new words at the beginning, which is great if you just bought this to learn new words. Not great if you need to look up any particular words. But uh, for me, I loved it because it was really uh, a lot of fun to see what was new words, what was new in that time period in the 60s. And one thing you're going to notice right away under A is, yep, atom bomb, atomic age, atomic power, atomic waste. Uh, in other parts, you'll see, we're not going to look at, but you'd see fallout, um, Manhattan Project, a lot of that atomic age kind of language that was new at the time. So that was really neat. And a lot of tech terms. We see here audiophile, an enthusiast of high fidelity sound reproduction, audiovisual, automate, a lot of, you know, tech words. So that was really cool to see. Saw some that were, I know a couple others I wanted to share here. This here, pizza. I thought I loved that it had pizza. I grew up with pizza. 
I watched Ninja Turtles, and they were always eating pizza. That was in the 1980s. An Italian pie with a chewy crust covered with a combination of tomato paste, cheese meat, and spices. And Pizzeria, a place that makes and serves pizza. And I'd say these pronunciations work. And the last one I wanted to share was... They had a definition here. They added rock and roll. A popular style of song and dance music having a two-beat rhythm developed from hillbilly patterns and noted for its repetitious sentimental tone. And that is a very poor definition. Uh, it is interesting to me that it mentions drawing on hillbilly patterns, or you might say country music, does not mention its roots in African-American music forms, uh, gospel, jazz, blues, etc., which most certainly a definition of rock and roll should. And I actually checked out of curiosity. We have an American Heritage Dictionary 4th edition, which is, I don't remember how old, but from the last, oh, 20 years or so. And this... Where did I see rock and roll? Down here, I think. Rock and roll, a form of popular music arising especially from rhythm and blues, country music, and gospel, and marked by amplified instrumentation and a heavily accented beat. That is a much better and fuller definition. So yeah, this is definitely not a perfect example of a uh, dictionary, this is why you want to use a more recent dictionary. You're going to have very outdated definitions or maybe definitions that were not well considered, well reviewed. But it was neat to pick this up and, oh, look through it for fun. We've got some different little illustrations. And I think more than anything, I really love the cover. I, I love, oh, let's look at this real quick. Air Age map of the world. Polar projection map. Neat. I, don't know, I love this, just these old covers like this. And it's, there's so much here just advertising it. It's, the cover is the advertisement. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. Oh, if you did, please give me a like. If you have anything you'd like to share, do so in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching. God bless, and we'll see you for the next one, friends.